All right, Kim 3111, this is where we left off, was um, looking at this question, where was it? Right here, where we were looking at some reactions of ester. So the first one is the treatment of an ester with excess lithium aluminum hydride. Now this reaction was covered in chapter 12. And again, I think it's better to put aqueous acid in here instead of water, but that's gonna reduce the, um, the uh, ester down to a primary alcohol. So we're going to put primary alcohol. And of course, you would also form a methanol in this case as a side product. For the second one, again, same thing. We have green yard. So we're going to replace water with aqueous acid. And, and remember that a green yard is going to react twice with a green yard. The first time it's going to form a ketone as an intermediate. And then it's going to react with the ketone. So again, it's going to react twice, and we're going to end up with a tertiary alcohol. So we're going to have two ethyl groups, one, two ethyl groups like this. And of course, we're also going to form methanol in this case as well, because methanol will lose or will lose the methoxy group, and that will um, uh, get a proton transfer to form methanol. The next one, in the first step, we form the carboxylate. We actually did this reaction already. And then in the second step, we do an SN2. And so that's going to make an ethyl ester. So we put in, we're going to get ethyl benzoate. This one, again, we've done this one already today. So we have ethyl benzoate. And the last one, right, this is a cyclic ester. And when we have a cyclic ester, we call that a lactone. And this is nothing more than um, two nucleophilic attacks by excess green yard. We're going to use H3O plus in the second step. So we're going to add ethyl groups twice to the carbonyl carbon. And so let's draw the product out very carefully. We're going to have our aromatic ring intact. Then if this is our carbon in yellow, it's going to have a hydroxyl attached to it and two ethyl groups. So one, two, like this. And then we're going to count these carbons, one, two, and then we're going to have them oxygen. So we have one, two, and then an oxygen attached out here. And that is going to get protonated to form our alcohol like this. So it's just a hydrolysis of a cyclic ester. So we end up losing the alcohol portion just like we did in the first problem on this page. So now what we're going to do is take that mechanism and kind of draw it. So this is, again, a lactone. And we went over the first step before our break. So our first step is going to be a proton transfer. Why would it be a proton transfer? It's surrender. Eh, it's to render the carbonyl more electrophilic. So here we go. We're going to end up with something that looks like this. And now water can come in as a nucleophile because our carbonyl is more electrophilic now. So water is going to come in as a nucleophile like this. We get a nucleophilic attack and we form this intermediate where we have our OH group here and then we have our protonated form down here. So now we need to do um, uh, two successive proton transfers because we want to remove this proton from here and we want to put a proton onto this oxygen so that we can um, expel it as a leaving group. All right, so let's do two proton transfers. So in the first proton transfer, water is going to behave as a base. It's going to abstract this proton. And so we're going to end up with this intermediate. So we end up with something that looks like this. Now we're going to protonate the oxygen in the ring. Oops, with our acid catalyst. So we'll draw in our hydronium ion like that. And we get a proton transfer like this. OK, oops, there we go. And so we end up with protonated oxygen. Oops. Put a lone pair that I didn't need. There we go. That's more like it. So that's going to have a positive charge. And here we go. And I'll put in the two lone pairs here. And so now we're going to lose the leaving group. So we're going to restore the carbonyl and we're going to lose our leaving group. So that opens up the ring. So now we're going to have something that looks like this. So we're going to have our oxonium ion. And it's going to have this hydroxyl. Then you have one, two, three carbons. So one, two, three carbons. Then we have the hydroxyl that left. And then the very last step, 
You do another proton transfer to restore neutrality, and you're done. So there's the whole mechanism of the hydrolysis of an ester in acid. All right, so we've gone over the um, Fischer esterification mechanism in detail, and now we've covered the hydrolysis of an ester in acid and base. So got a lot of mechanisms down today. So let's move on to section 20.12, where we look at the reaction of amides, and we're going to start with the preparation of amides. So, so far today, we've covered acid chlorides, acid anhydrides, and esters, and now we move on to the least reactive of these, which is the amide. So, let's get right to it. Well, this reaction is one that you saw today when we covered the chemistry of acid chlorides. We said if you take an acid chloride, treat it with two equivalents of ammonia, that makes your um, primary amide, and of course, you would also form ammonium chloride in this case, right? Because the second equivalent of ammonia neutralizes um, the protonated form of the uh, amide. Then um, another, uh, so this next part deals with another reaction of an amide, and that is the hydrolysis of an amide. So an amide can be hydrolyzed in acid or base. Now the hydrolysis in acid uh, it works, and the driving force of the reaction here is that here is our acid, right? And this is our conjugate acid over here. Well, the pKa of, of um, hydronium is around negative 1.7, but the pKa of the ammonium ion is around 9, and so the equilibrium is going to lie higher to the side of the weaker acid, right? So over here, weaker weaker acid. And so that's the driving force behind this reaction. But again, not a great reaction, kind of a slow reaction that requires really high temperatures. Um, so again, and this is, you know, just summarizing what I just told you, is that the products are favored because when you get the protonated form of the, the amino group, um, it's, it's not only um, favored in terms of pKa, but it's also favored in terms of the fact that it can't behave as a nucleophile. So kind of a double, a double whammy there. Now, as far as the mechanism goes, I've never asked this mechanism to anybody on a quiz or anything. I'm even looking at my notes right now, and I'm just gonna put here, will we'll not ask you this mechanism. It might be in a homework or something, but it wouldn't be in a quiz or exam. So I'm not gonna go over this one in detail. Again, it follows the whole nucleophilic attack and loss of leaving group, like all of these nucleophilic acyl substitutions do. And then it's just a matter of figuring out where are the proton transfers. You can also hydrolyze an amide in base. And it says that this reaction is analogous to the basic hydrolysis of an ester. Now remember that after the first, uh, the first step is complete, you end up with a carboxylate. Right, you end up with a carboxylate, and so you would need to acidify to produce the carboxylic acid. So the mechanism for this reaction is shown here. And again, I've never asked this mechanism directly because we have enough mechanisms with Fisher and all that stuff. But again, I do think it's a mechanism worth looking at, um, uh, just taking a quick peek at. Uh, and again, um, you have the last step here where you need to treat it with H3O+. Plus in order to produce the carboxylic acid. So I'll just scribble that down here. All right, other reactions of amide. So this is a new one, one that we haven't covered yet. And that is that you can reduce a primary amide all the way down to a primary amine by treating with excess lithium aluminum hydride and then water. Keep in mind that we, it's not H3O plus. Right, because if you used H3O+, plus, then you would end up with the protonated form of the amine, and that's not what we want. So it's just treating it with water in the last step. There's no mechanism provided for this reaction, and so you don't have to have any kind of mechanism for this one at all. So if we take a look, take a look excuse me, of these, at these reactions, uh, the first one is one that we already covered today. So excess uh, ammonia with an acid chloride that's gonna give us a primary amide. All right, so we're gonna end up with a primary amide, plus we would end up with ammonium chloride in that case. And then the second one is just the acid hydrolysis of an amide. And again, I told you the driving force of this reaction is kind of twofold. It's based off of pKa, but it's also 
based off the fact that when you form the ammonium ion, it can't behave as a nucleophile, right? So it's not, the reaction isn't going to go in the reverse direction. Well, that brings us to the last section of new chemistry, which is the preparation of nitriles. And this is a reaction that you saw way back in organic chemistry one. If you take cyanide and you treat it with a primary alkyl halide, you get an SN2, so nucleophilic attack, followed by loss of leaving group. And you form a nitrile that way. But there's a new way to make a nitrile in town. And that is, and you just kind of have to memorize this reaction to take a primary amide and treat it with SOCl2, which again is thionyl chloride, and that makes a nitrile. Now, this is an irreversible reaction, right? Because SO2 is a gas. There is a mechanism for this reaction in the book. I will not ask you this mechanism. So, will not ask you yeah i will not ask you this mechanism whatsoever this is one that you do not have to know so in the interest of time i'm just going to move forward on this one if you want to take a look at it and learn it be my guest but again i won't ask you to memorize that mechanism so another thing that we can do with a nitrile is hydrolyze it to an amide and you know that we can hydrolyze an amide to a carboxylic acid so this does provide a way to take a nitrile and convert it all the way to a carboxylic acid if you just treat it with H3O plus and heat it long enough. Now the mechanism of this part is covered in the textbook. I will not ask this mechanism, so will not ask this mechanism. Again, I'll leave it as an FYI. If you wanna go over it, be my guest, but I will not ask you this mechanism so you don't have to stress about this one a whole lot. The um, second to last reaction that we look at, no, sorry, the next reaction for a nitrile is um, the hydrolysis in base. So you can hydrolyze a nitrile in base. However, when you do that, after step one, you end up with a carboxylate and then you treat it with aqueous acid and it's gonna protonate it to form the carboxylic acid. You do not have to know this mechanism. So again, I will not ask you this mechanism, any of the nitrile mechanism. So we'll move on from there. And again, the second to last is, I was a little bit ahead of myself here. The second to last reaction for a nitrile is treating it with a green yard, which produces an imine. So you end up with an imine in the first step and then you hydrolyze the imine um, to a ketone. And we looked at the hydrolysis of an imine to a ketone. So basically what happens is you end up with this intermediate, then when you treat this with aqueous acid, aqueous acid, you end up with this, right, which you recognize from chapter 19. So this is an imine, imine, and then you hydrolyze that to a ketone. I'm running out of space here, but that gets hydrolyzed to a ketone in aqueous acid. And again, that was covered in chapter 19. So the last reaction, I think the last new reaction in the chapter is the reduction of a nitrile using lithium aluminum hydride. The worst accident I've ever seen in a lab was this, uh, this reaction right here. It was a reaction between a nitrile and lithium aluminum hydride. Anyhow, so what happens is you deliver two protons to this electrophilic carbon. And then remember, in the second step, you can't use acid. You have to use water because if you used acid, right, then that would give you the ammonium, right, and you don't want to do that, so you have to use water in the last step, and that covers all the reactions of nitrile. So let's see if we can take a look at solving these ones here. So the first one, we're taking a nitrile and reducing it with lithium aluminum hydride, and then following that up by, um, oops, sorry, my mistake, getting ahead of myself here, treating that with um, water. And so that's gonna give you a primary amine. So we end up with our carbon and we end up with a primary amine. In the next one, we're gonna do an SN2 in the first step. So the first step we just do an, oops, come on, Mr. Dion. We do an SN2 reaction like this to make this intermediate. So we'll draw the whole thing out like this. There we go. And then we're gonna hit that with methyl magnesium bromide. So the second step, we're gonna hit this with methyl magnesium bromide and we're gonna end up with this intermediate. So we'll put it, make the double bond like this. 
scan is going to look something. Uh, yeah, something. Oops, I need a second long pair. There we go. And then we're going to have our methyl, right? And then when we treat that with aqueous acid, in the last step, it's going to hydrolyze the imine all the way down to the ketone. So we're going to go from the imine down to the ketone. So let me draw the ketone, which is going to look something like this. And there you go. That's the whole reaction, just like that. And so now we've covered every reaction in chapter 20. And so what we're going to do on, in class on Wednesday, the beginning, is we're going to look at a bunch of synthesis problems. And as always, you want to look for changes in the carbon skeleton, for changes in functional groups. And we've learned a plethora of new functional group transformations. Now, I've taught this class long enough to know there's only so much yammering on I can do before you start to lose I start to lose your attention. And so what I would recommend doing is printing out this slide and going over each of these reactions many, many times to uh, so that you have them all kind of down pat. And I told you that chapter 20 is probably the most reaction heavy chapter of all. And I think that's manifest here in this slide. So I'll give you some time to take a look at that. But at the end, he kind of gives you a little bit of a summary you know, to kind of remind you of how we form carbon-carbon bonds and some, you know, and bringing in some epoxides and stuff from chapter 12. And so what I'd like to do on Wednesday, so this will be June uh, 14th, I would like to take a look at this problem with you. I would also like to take a look at this problem with you, so June 14th. Uh, the spectroscopy section, I'll just kind of cover that with you briefly next class. We'll just tend to kind of take a quick look at it. And there are a couple other problems in the back of the book I want to look at. And I think that what I'll do is I'll stop the recording now and I'll just bring them up with my students at the end of class.